I'm Eric Keynes for NVIDIA, and this talk is about denoising for ray tracing. I have a quote today from Daphne Culler, a Stanford professor who works on AI for biomedical applications. She says, the world is noisy and messy. You need to deal with the noise and uncertainty. This is particularly good for ray tracing because ray tracing can be extremely noisy. On the left, you'll see an image that has five samples per pixel using path tracing. And you can see it's quite noisy. There's a lot of black pixels that where light just didn't get anywhere near where we needed it to. After 50 samples, it's starting to look better. 500, better yet. 5,000, it's looking pretty darn good. And if you looked at really closely, you'd still see some noise in there. And in fact, films themselves have this problem where they'll shoot 3,000 rays per pixel, but they'll still see some noise. So what they'll use and what we're going to use today is a process called denoising to make those images better. And you can see there's a diminishing return here. It's pretty much the variance goes down with the square root of the number of samples. So if you go from, say, four samples, that's twice as good as just one sample. Nine samples, that's three times as good as one sample. But it's diminishing returns. So we just can't afford to shoot 5,000 rays per pixel right now, so we have to do something else. And as I say, that's denoising. Our reality is, is that we start with a noisy image if we're doing any kind of more elaborate effects, and we have to try to get to a nicer image. We'd love to get this kind of image, but we often will have a crude noisy image, and then we have to reconstruct. So reconstruction is called denoising, and there are various ways to do it. Here's another example where the left is noisy and the right is denoised. This denoising process can be extremely fast. It says identical time, but it's almost identical time. It's the blink of an eye. And what denoising does is basically look at that area, at the various surfaces, and tries to use data both in the color channel and any other kind of information they might want to use, like the normal or the color of the texture that's underlying the surface, and use that to come up with some kind of filtering process where it tries to fill in, tries to infer what's going on in the surface. So you could denoise by effect, for example. So in this image, we have a nice soft shadow given by that plant onto a floor. But it might be difficult to actually denoise this if you try to do it on the final image because the floor grain would possibly mess up your algorithm. So what you could do is instead denoise just the shadow image, which would just be a bunch of grayscale tones. And then you would fold that in with the textured surface and get a nice final effect. The problem with denoising by effect is that if you did this for every single pass, it would start to really add up. The denoising costs would become exorbitant. So what we try to do is denoise on the final image. That way we have just one denoising pass. So on the left we have the original image, and on the right we have a human filtered image and a neural network filtered image. And the human one is basically using sort of traditional denoising techniques and then tweaking and so on. And the neural network is using an entirely different process. What's interesting here is that I think the computers are winning because in the upper right, you can kind of see that back wall. There's a little strip of green. It's kind of blurred out a little bit too much with the human version, but the neural network has picked up on that and kept the vertical stripes there. Deep learning can be used for image denoising. The way this works is that we have a bunch of rendered images, 20,000, 40,000, however many we can get as training data, and then we train our neural net using those images to have the neural net kind of know what the environment's like. We can then use that neural net to take a noisy image and have it infer what the real image should look like. So we have some huge training set or some reasonable training set, it just depends. And from that, we then can actually do a great job of denoising images, surprisingly good. So here's a noisy image, one sample per pixel. And here's our denoised image. So the shadows look really nice. And notice how soft they are. A little bit of soft shadow. It's a fairly nice final image. You can compare that to the ground truth. They're almost identical. In comparison, the traditional method in rasterization is to use shadow mapping, where you render everything from the light's point of view. Here you get somewhat sharper kinds of shadows. They're just not as beautiful, let's face it. And it has other kinds of problems, like that one person is floating a little bit. It's called Peter Panning. And this can be avoided by using newer techniques. Here's another example of denoising, where we have this shiny surface varying in roughness. And denoised, it looks pretty good. And here's the ground truth. 
Now there's a fair bit of difference between the denoised and the ground truth here, but it's enough to be plausible. It's a reasonable result, and it's one that is going to basically be reasonable to most people's visual systems. They're not going to be surprised or shocked by the result. In comparison, here's one that's pretty different, actually. This is called a stochastic screen space reflection method that uses rasterization, and it's kind of using information in the screen. And it has problems. There are ways that it works fairly well, but there's other places where it kind of falls apart. To show you the comparison again, we have the ground truth and the screen space reflection, and you can see they're considerably different. Here's another image. Here we have just one sample per pixel of ray trace global illumination. And denoising, we get this really pretty fantastic result. It just blows me away that it can do this well. To compare this to ground truth, in the ground truth image, you'll notice a little bit of darkening around the fringes of things and in the crevices and so on. But for the most part, the images are quite comparable. Last, I'm going to finish off with an animation. So there's a movie that was rendered called Zero Day by this person called Beeple. And he kindly put his uh, entire database and animation path and so on on the web for people to reuse as they will. So we use this at NVIDIA to experiment with different denoising operations. This is a pretty complicated scene. There's actually about more than 7,000 individual triangles that are moving around that are lights. So those light sources are all moving around, and moving light sources can be quite tricky to capture nicely. And so in this video, what you're seeing is, on the left, you're seeing four samples per pixel and about 16 rays shot per pixel total. They're bouncing around a bit and the denoised is on the right. Now, this is not real time at this point. It's about seven frames per second is the calculation going on here. But you can see that the denoised result is quite nice. Here's the final result using denoising. And if you want, you can compare it to the original. There will be links on the website. It looks quite nice. You have to really kind of freeze frame and do a side by side to see where there are slight differences between this and the one where they traced thousands of rays per pixel. Denoising to me is magic. To summarize, it's just this cool technique that can work surprisingly well on cleaning up a lot of problems and a lot of undersampling that where we'd love to have more samples, but we can't. And I think to me, it's what really made ray tracing jump ahead a little bit more quickly than people expected. I think we also were thinking, well, ray tracing eventually there'll be hardware, but denoising really takes a, a, a great leap. You know, instead of needing thousands of samples or hundreds of samples or even tens of samples, we can get by with just a few samples in many, many situations. To conclude, I'd like to have one more quote. So we started this whole series with, there's an old joke that goes, ray tracing is the technology of the future and always will be. Well, the future's here. And I like this quote from Steve Parker, which is, ray tracing is simple enough to fit on a business card, yet complicated enough to consume an entire career. For further resources, see the website. Ray Tracing Gems is a book I highly recommend, given that I co-edited it. And it's free for download. And I hope you take advantage of it. And thanks for letting me have your time.